Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. We at this moment are studying various types of sutras. We are trying to understand these types. So far we have studied the Saudhnya Sutras, the technical terms used by Panini in his grammar. And these terms are very crucial, very core because on the basis of these terms the entire material is arranged. <coughs> then we also looked at the Paribhasha Sutras where we focused on the meta rules which tell us how this system works how the rules in this system should be interpreted. Then we also studied the concept of vidhi and then we studied various types of vidhis, prakriti, sadhaka, vidhi and so on and so forth. Now we will continue this discussion on vidhi and in this lecture we shall also talk about the next type of sutras namely Niyama Sutra. So, the topic of this lecture would be Vidhi and Niyama. <coughs> there is one more Vidhi which we should discuss in detail. This is a feature, unique feature of the grammar of Panini. This is called Savarana Grahana Vidhi, prescription stating that an individual sound represents its homogeneous sound, Savarana, Swara, Savarana, Varana. The sutra which states this vidhi is Anudit Savaranasya Chapratyaya 1169. What this means is the following, when not prescribed a Pratyaya, the sounds which are part of the Pratyahara An and what are those sounds? A, E, U, Ru, Lu, a O I O, all vowels, H and then Y V R L, these are all ants. So when not prescribed, the sounds which are part of the pratyahara an, and the ones which are mentioned with the addition of the marker U, actually Ut, namely Ku, Chu, Tu, Tu and Pu, they stand for their homogeneous sounds, their savarna. Varanas. I repeat, when not prescribed, when not part of the predicate, that is a pratyayaha, the sounds which are part of the pratyahara an <coughs> and the ones which are mentioned with the addition of the marker u, they stand for their homogeneous sounds, which means that these sounds they represent their homogeneous Savarna sounds. Now what is Savarna? We have already seen this. Let us take a quick recap of what we have studied. There are two sutras in the Ashtadhyayi which define what is a Savarna, 119 and 1110. Tulyasya Prayatnam Savarnam is 119 and what this means is that two sounds are said to be homogeneous with each other if both their place of articulation as well as their effort of articulation is same. And there is another sutra Najjalo which adds to this definition which says that the vowels and the consonants are not termed homogeneous of each other even if both of their place of articulation as well as the effort of articulation is same. This is how the term Savarna gets defined by these two sutras. Now it is interesting to once again take a recap as to who, as to note down who is Savarana of whom, which sounds are Savaranas, which sounds are 
homogeneous with other sounds. For example, a, e, u, ru, these are the four vowels, these are short vowels. They are homogeneous with 18 varieties. We have already studied this. How do we come to these 18 varieties? There are three varieties of length, rasva, dirgha, plutha, three varieties of accent, udatta, anudatta, svarita, the tone, and two varieties of nasal, non-nasal type. That means three multiplied by three multiplied by two, that is 18. 18 varieties of all these four short vowels. Then comes lu, which is homogeneous with 12 varieties, namely rasva and plutha. Lu does not have a dirgha. Then udatta, anudatta, svarita, and ananasika, niranunasika. 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2. That is 12 varieties. A, au, i, and au, they are also homogeneous with 12 varieties because they do not have a rasva version. So, they have only dirgha and plutha as far as the length is concerned and then udatta, anudatta and svarita as far as the tone is concerned, anunasika and niranunasika. So, 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 once again there are these 12 varieties. These are the homogeneous vowels. Now, when we come to the consonants, we note that y, v and l are homogeneous with two varieties, namely anunasika and niranunasika. R and H are not homogeneous with any other sounds. It is very important to note this. Also, K, Kh, G, Gh, Ng are homogeneous with each other. Similarly, Ch, Ch, J, J, Y are homogeneous with each other, subvarna of each other. Similarly, T, Th, D, D, N are homogeneous with each other. T, Th, D, D, N are homogeneous with each other. And P, P, B, B, M are also homogeneous with with each other by the definition that we just saw. Anudit Savaranasya by the definition that we just saw, Tulyasya Prayatnam Savaranam. We also noted that the vowels and the consonants they are not Savaranas. Now, what does this Savarana Grahana Vidhi do on this background? So, what does 1169 actually do? We know who is Savarna with whom. Now, on that basis, we need to know what this Savarna Grahana Vidhi does. So, A1169 states that these sounds, which are homogeneous with each other by definition, are represented by some sounds. In the 14 Pratyahara Sutras that come at the beginning of the Ashtadhyayi to form the technical term Pratyahara, which we have already studied in quite a detail. The sounds that are mentioned in these 14 sutras, the ones that are actually mentioned stand for or represent their homogeneous sounds. That is the purpose of this sutra. This is what this Savarna Grahana Vidhi does. To put it in another terms, A, E, U, Ru, short vowels, they are homogeneous with 18 varieties and they stand for them, they represent them. Even though the other varieties are not mentioned in these 14 sutras, the ones that are mentioned, they represent all those 18 varieties. What this means is that whenever a sutra, for example, mentions a as an input, it means that that sutra applies to all 18 varieties of a, because a stands for all 18 varieties of a. And same is the case with all other sounds. So, if a sutra mentions E as an input, it means that that sutra applies to all 18 varieties of E. If a sutra mentions U as an input, Ru as an input, it means that that sutra applies to all 18 varieties of A. This is the meaning of this sutra 1169, also known as Savarana Grahana Vidhi. Here is an example. There is a sutra 7432 which says asya chvau. What this means is immediately before the suffix chvi, chvau is 71, asya a is 61 of a and e is continued from the previous sutra. 
What this sutra means then is that immediately before the suffix chvi, a is substituted by long e. So we have an example shukla plus chvi and then we have shukla having a at the end which comes immediately before chvi. Now this sutra says that replace this a by e. So we have shukli plus chvi, chvi gets deleted. So we get the word shukli. So here we have a in place of a e is substituted. Will this apply if the vowel over here is a? Yes. So if you have ganga plus chvi, this a gets replaced by e and so we have gangi plus chvi and so final form will be gangi. Now this is possible because I mean this sutra is applicable in this case because the sutra mentions only a. Therefore, this a stands for all its 18 varieties. Because the sutra mentions a as an input, it applies to short a as well as to long a, which is stated to be its savarna or homogeneous sound. So, asya chvau applies in both these cases and many more cases. These are just the two examples. So, a becomes e because of asya chvau, a also becomes e because of the same sutra asya chvau. Why? Because the sutra mentions only a which then stands for its 18 varieties. This is stated by 1169. This is the purpose of 1169. This is what is known as Savarana Grahana Vidhi. Savarana Grahana Vidhi. So this was an important Vidhi which we did not mention in the earlier lecture which is mentioned in this lecture. Now we shall move towards the next type of sutra namely the Niyama Sutra which is, which is also related to Vidhi and we shall see the examples to make this clearer. So what is the Niyama Sutra? This is a positive negation. Let us try to understand what is Niyama. Niyama is positive negation if we can coin the word. What this means is that a niyama is a negation primarily with a positive statement and not with a negative marker na, ma, etc. This is a positive statement resulting in the negation. What this is made up of is the following. It is a restatement of something that is already stated by a vidhi. What this restatement means is that the restatement is with respect to certain conditions stated in the previous vidhi. Then re, this restatement negates the other conditions. Thereby elimination by this restated rule is what is achieved, is what is the result. Therefore, by making a positive statement, the sutra achieves elimination or negation. This is what is called niyama positive negation. What is the meaning of niyama, the word or what is the principle? So this is a principle used in daily behavior as well, which is also then similar and which seems to be the base for the use of the term niyama in the Pyakaran Shastra. So things that are already available to us or known to us either by a previous statement or otherwise by other means of knowledge. They get restated sometimes and then this restatement is meant for negation of the rest. The implication is that if the rest are applied, one is liable for penalty. Well, that, that means that that rest should not be applied. Here are two examples. Fast food. Fast food means food on fasting days. This is not fast food of other kind. This is the food on fasting days. So generally we have such statements made like on the fasting day one should eat this, this type of food. So one does not need to be told all these things because one knows by instincts that if one is hungry one should eat food. But still this statement is made which acts like a restatement and then 
what it means is on the fasting day only this kind of food is to be eaten which means that if you eat anything else your fast will be broken. You are not supposed to eat anything else than what is stated recommended. This is a niyama. Then the other example is boards signaling one way traffic. We often find these boards in a city like Mumbai where there are signals signaling that this is only one way. You cannot come from the other side. Now the point is that you do not need somebody to tell you that if there is a road just as you can move from one direction you can also come in from other direction. This is a given. Having said that if you find a board which indicates that you can go from this side this becomes a restatement and what this means is that you can only go from one direction you cannot come from the other direction. If you try to come from the other direction you your action will be considered as the breach of the traffic law and you will be liable for penalty. So this elimination this negation does have a real impact in the life daily life daily behavior. Something similar happens in the Vyakarana Shastra as well. Here are the examples of Niyama Sutra. First of all we present the Vidhi Sutra Sanyogantasya Lopaha 8.2.23. What this says is that any Pada at the end of which appears a Sanyoga, the last part of this Sanyoga is deleted. To put it in the form of an equation we can see that given this bracket indicates that this is a Pada, this is a word and there are these two elements which are left blank to indicate that there is something that precedes and then at the end of this Pada there is C1 and C2. C1 occupies the final position, C2 occupies the pre-final position or penultimate position. If this is the situation then C1 which is at the end is deleted and the resultant form would be just this C2. This is the meaning of A223 Sanyogantasya Lopaha. Here is a concrete example. By the grammatical derivation, we reach a form, we reach a stage where we have goman followed by ta. This is a pada, and now at the end of this pada, we have ta and na, ta in the final position C1, na in the pre final position C2. By application of A223, ta gets deleted, and what we get is goman which is the finally finished form, goman. Now let us see what happens when we introduce A224. A224 is rat sasya. What it says is that given the same conditions where there is a word pada and at the end of which there is a sanyoga, there are two consonants in close proximity. C1 is the final one, C2 is the pre-final one. Amongst these now if C2 is R, then among all the C1s, S is deleted. So what this sutra says is S is to be deleted. If C2 is R and C1 is S, then S is to be deleted. Which means that if you have this situation where R is followed by S, then this S is deleted and you will have only R at the end of the Pada. Now you do not need to state this because this is already stated by A223. Still A224 is there saying the same thing. So this is the restatement which then means that in this situation where C1 is S and C2 is R then S gets deleted which means that only S in the position of C1 gets deleted if preceded by R in a combination of two consonants implying that if R is followed by non S then this non S is not deleted. So this R non S 
remains as a non sir even though this is the consonant a223 does not apply here and this sir does not get deleted the words like urj ending in j j does not get deleted because it is preceded by r and so a224 which is a niyama sutra applies over here and so prohibits the application of the deletion of the final consonant if it is j preceded by r here is another example of niyama this is krutta dhita samasascha 1246 this sutra defines what is a pratipadika what it says is words ending in krut and tadhita suffixes as well as samasa are termed pratipadika the term pratipadika was actually not available to words ending in the krut and tadhita suffixes by the previous sutra 1245 which is arthavat adhatu apratyayah pratipadikam so it clearly says apratyayah so a word ending in a pratyaya does not become pratipadika krut and tadhita is a pratyaya and therefore the words ending in krut and tadhita is a pratyayant word a word which has a pratyaya at the end so it does not qualify to be called a pratipadika according to 1245 so the term pratipadika was not available to krudanta and tadhitantas by this sutra in this scenario this sutra 1246 is stating the term pratipadika to krut and tadhita therefore now 1246 is, is acting as a vidhi in this one part namely krut and tadhita now what happens to samasa but for samasa the term pratipadika can be said to be stated by 1245 because samasa is meaningful samasa is not a verbal root and does not always end in a suffix this means that samasa does get pratipadika saudhnya by 1245 then what is the need for 1246 to state it again 1246 states it again this is a restatement now what is the meaning of this what this means is that there is something like samasa which is not intended to get this term pratipadika and that gets eliminated because of this restatement so this is achieved by this restatement it negates this term to those elements which are like samasa now which are those units groups of words they do not get this term groups of words is that unit which is like samasa samasa is constituted by two padas two subantas we have already studied this and so a group of words which is also constituted by words padas is like pratipadika is like samasa but still it is not term pratipadika primarily because only samasa gets the term pratipadika and not these others so for example the the for word group panchatvangataha this is not considered a pratipadika even though it means one thing he died so panchatvangataha is not considered as pratipadika only samasa is considered as pratipadika so these two words do not get this term this is how the niyama works as far as the pratipadika tva is concerned so these terms and there are several such examples they are termed as non pratipadikas but the paninian grammatical system does not have a category to treat such words we have provided a category called visa for these particular words here is the third example taparas tatkalasya 1170 what this means is that a sound to which is added t after stands for the same length in terms of time for pronunciation variety of that sound this is the meaning a sound to which is added t after stands for the same length variety of that particular sound now this has 1169 at its background 
1169 states that a set of sounds mentioned in the 14 sutras stand for their homogeneous sounds. We have seen this in this lecture. So, a, e, uru short vowels are homogeneous with 18 varieties and they stand for them, they represent them. This is what 1169 means. But what if a particular operation is to be stated only to one length varieties? We know how these 18 varieties come about. There are three rasva dirgha pluta length varieties multiplied by tone varieties multiplied by nasal varieties. So if amongst the length varieties we want to refer to only one length variety and not to the three, then what do we do? Here is the solution 1170. We add the after that sound and then that sound will refer to only that length variety. Say an operation is to be stated only to short six varieties of a, then what do we do? 1170 states that when the is added after a, which means that now we have at. Now this at in will, will indicate that us here stands for only six varieties. So this is a kind of restatement. What this means is that such a mention would not refer to all other varieties of a. This is how it becomes a niyama. So here is an example, ato bhisa ais 719 states that ais is to be substituted in place of bhis when it comes immediately after an ang ending in short a. And here is an example, we have rama plus bhis, rama is an ang ending in short a. Now 719 applies over here and then bhis is changed to ais and so we get rama plus ais and then there is a sandhi we get ramais then there is one more sandhi we get ramaihi or ramaiha but this does not apply to gopa plus bhis because the word mentioned in the sutra is at which refers to only short a does not refer to all varieties of a as was the case in asya chvau here a refers to only the six short length varieties of a this is not that short Therefore, we do not substitute this bis by ice over here and we get the form gopa bhi as it is. Now there is a note on this example namely 1170 also serves as a vidhi in one aspect and that aspect is the following one. 1170 prescribes that when the is added to a long vowel of a e u ru namely e a e u and ru it stands for its six long varieties. This is what it means. Now since no long vowel of these four is mentioned in the 14 sutras, the representation function was not stated to these four long vowels in 1169. And that is where this sutra comes in and states it anew. Eat, Ut, Ruth and Aat, they refer to six long varieties of E, U and Ru as well as A. In this way, 1170 can be stated to be both Vidhi as well as a Niyama Sutra. And the fourth example of Niyama is very peculiar one, sentence at such. Sentence is a Niyama. So sentence forms the main unit in the process of communication. And communication is a specific activity which requires specific knowledge. Sentence formation is thus a specific activity and not a general one. But it is based on the generic template in which slots are filled in by specific verbal elements. And here are the examples which we have already seen. So these are the ones which are the initial generic slots, generic templates. And then we fill in these slots by prakriti and pratyaya. These are still general, but now at least we know that this is a prakriti and this is a pratyaya. Now we do not know which prakriti and which pratyaya is there here, but when we fill in gamma in this vacant slot, now we have got some notion, some idea. And then what this means is that in this generic template, each and every element can come in. Each and every element is already stated over here. In such a situation, we are restating this gamma because it was already stated. We are restating gamma. What this means is that this particular unit will have gamma only and everything else is eliminated. 
And then when we add T over here, we are eliminating all other options. Then when we add Rama over here, we are eliminating other options and Su and Grama and Um and so on, then we are eliminating all other options. Finally, when we arrive at a sentence like this, we say that this is Gachati only and not Pashyati and Pathati and so on, whose Karta is Rama only and not Krishna and Mohana and whose object is Grama only and not Nagara or Shala. This is how other words, other meanings get eliminated. This is how a sentence is described, an audible sentence is described in the form of a Niyama. At this generic stage, all meaning and word elements are available to fill in these slots. But when the speaker chooses one, say Gamma for example, then this is a restatement which then means that the other actions and other verbal roots they get eliminated. This phenomenon recurs with each and every verbal element added over here, over here, over here and so on and so forth. So as I said earlier, Gachati is the verb over here and not Pathati or Pashyati and so on. Ramaha is the Karta over here and not Krishnaha and Mohanaha and Gramam is the Karma and not Nagaram or Shalam. Now this fact helps one explain the confirmation that one gives in the speech. If this sentence is uttered, Gachati, Ramaha, Gramam and if somebody asks to confirm, then this confirmation will require this particular Niyama in the form of this sentence. These are the examples of Niyama, Niyama Sutras as well as Niyama in general. To summarize, Vidhi is the core of the system of Paninian grammar. The statements that introduce an element either verbal or operational in the system of grammar forms the backbone of the sentence construction, which is what is the aim of Paninian grammar. Different types of Vidhis constitute one grammatical derivation process in a typical sequence. Niyama is another unique type of rule and it has got some correlation with a similar concept noted in the Purva Mimamsa as Parisankhya, where there is a positive statement but negation is what is achieved. Now to close this lecture, let us follow the practice of reading the Mangala Charana. This Mangala Charana is taken from a celebrated text called Paribhasha Bhaskar composed by Sheshadri Sudhi and the Mangala Charana reads like this. Natva Guru Charana Yugam Smritva Brahma Khilatmakam Vimalam Rachayati Sheshadri Sudhi Paribhasha Bhaskaram Svashishya Krite. I repeat, Natva Guru Charana Yugam Smritva Brahma Khilatmakam Vimalam Rachayati Sheshadri Sudhi Paribhasha Bhaskaram Svashishya Krite. And the five sutras that we have today are these ones taken from 7.4. They are Nau Changyupadhaya Rasvaha, Naglopishas Pruditam, Braja Bhasa Bhasha Deepa Jeeva Mila Pida Manyatrasyam, Lopa Pibate Richa Bhasasya, Tishthate Rit. I repeat Nau Changyupadhaya Rasvaha, Naglopishas Pruditam, Praja Bhasa Bhasa Deepa Jeeva Mila Pida Manyatrasyam, Lopa Pibate Richa Bhasasya, Tishthate Rit. We will take up the next type of sutra, namely the Atidesha, in the next lecture. Thank you for your attention.